Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Yep. Okay. Um, all right, so for those of you that don't know who I am at this point, um, I'm Ken Crosby. Um, <clears throat> and what I've sort of narrowed down to and focused on for my thesis was um, Microsoft Office and SharePoint as a potential educational platform. So looking at uh, Office 365 and sort of assessing it for its capabilities as um, a platform for delivering uh, education online, t technical training, whatever it might be. Um, <clears throat> so my, my question was, is Office 365 and SharePoint an effective platform for online technical training? Um, so does it function as well as something like Blackboard um, or uh, Moodle or some of those other uh, learning-based platforms? that are out there specifically for uh, online or hybrid classes. Um, so how I went ab about this was uh, finding a way to sort of evaluate Office 365 for its potential as an online educational platform. So I looked at social constructivist learning theory, Andrew Goji, um, and a couple other platforms that are geared towards uh, kind of augmenting Office 365 or adding functionality in some way uh, just to see what was out there. But my goal was to evaluate it at its its base level, its core with, with no tinkering or tweaks, um, outside of the box kind of things. Just at its, at its core level, will it work as a educational platform? Um, and I won't go in depth into to all the things like, uh, you know, what I got from social constructivist learning theory, but some of the principles of uh, constructivist learning theory are things like reflection, uh, metacognition, sociocultural learning, uh, prior and authentic experiences, and generative learning strategies. Um, and anytime you look into this, you're going to see Malcolm Knowles' name quite a few times on a lot of this stuff. Um, he was kind of one of the, the pioneers of really digging into this type of stuff and publishing a lot of literature about it. Um, and then with andragogy, uh, things like the need to know, adults are, are motivated in a very specific way as opposed to children. So they need to know why they're being taught something. Um, also having things like foundations for that learning, self-concept, the ability to take control of their learning. Um, we as adults kind of want to be in control and we have that need to sort of uh, self-drive ourselves towards uh, whatever our goals might be. Um, orientation, readiness of the learning, how, how ready is it to apply immediately to uh, what our needs might be. And then ultimately the motivation. Adults are motivated uh, to learn something for a reason. It's either going to um, fulfill an immediate need in their personal life or their professional life. I move my uh, little people out of the way here. Um, <clears throat> so what I, I concluded from from looking at uh, several you know articles and journals is that uh, between both social constructivism and andragogy and even a lot of other uh, theories about learning, there's gonna be a lot of overlap or relationship and a lot of these can support one another. Um, so things like prior and authentic experiences tie directly into foundation and orientation. Um, things like self-concept, our, our, our desire to uh, sort of take responsibility for our, our learning journey. Uh, can lead to things like metacognition and help enable metacognition, how we uh, approach thinking about the way we learn. Um, principles of constructivism align well with things like technical training, where we want folks to really have that hands-on, that troubleshooting experience with that, that authentic learning experience. Um, learning what I've sort of gathered from this as well is that learning is very fluid. It changes uh, based on the person, the environment, 
uh, the technology that's being used. Uh, it's, it's impacted in a lot of different ways, not just by the internal of you know, the student themselves, their motivations or, or what's driving them forward. Um, and also that there, there really is no absolute 100% perfect theory to explain learning because it's, it's different for every person. But we can make uh, certain assumptions to sort of generalize it and, and encompass that. Um, so some of the methods that I used for this, uh, <clears throat> I built a working prototype, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, so I used Microsoft Office 365 and SharePoint to create my working prototype, which is still a little in progress. Um, utilizing some of the default uh, features that are there in the platform, so like Skype for Business, um, video portal, uh, things to do, uh, achieve certain things like synchronous sessions or hosting videos, um, other stuff that we just naturally will have like uh, word processors, stuff like Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, um, anything to generate and uh, host documentation or provide handouts, work samples. I also use Photoshop, Illustrator, and Premiere to generate some of the, the collateral elements to this, so things like graphics, a um, little bit of image manipulation for some of my annotated elements for uh, uh, putting as figures in my thesis. I also did a little bit of work recording some quick video to put in there just to show what uh, video would look like hosted within the platform. Um, also did a little bit of work with HTML and CSS. I know my, my main goal was to not uh, modify the platform to get a very specific look, design, or, or really impact it in some way. But I did make a few minor tweaks to improve uh, how the user interface worked. And this was fairly minimal in terms of uh, methods of implementing that. And then I also used Jing for grabbing some of my uh, screenshots and doing some annotation. <clears throat> okay, so for my prototype, I basically approached this with uh, the goal of creating a, a technical training site for user or beginner level uh, SharePoint. So someone coming to SharePoint as a platform, a business platform, having no prior experience with it. Um, so this was intended to be delivered as an entirely online class with asynchronous and synchronous uh, elements through discussion boards and things like Skype for business, um, for online office hours. Um, also trying to establish something like a tiered progression throughout this, so a, a specific hierarchy, uh, seeing if a hierarchy could be established for uh, progressive learning or even helping enable the student. So if they know uh, quite a bit about things like lists in SharePoint, they might not need that, and giving them the ability to sort of opt out or kind of gloss over that a little bit just to remind themselves and move on to something that is more pertinent to their, their motivations and their goals. Um, also did some, some written and video content for that as well. So I'm going to jump out to my prototype. Can everyone still see my screen? Yeah, we can still see it. Okay. Um, so this, for those of you that aren't familiar, this is uh, SharePoint. This is SharePoint within um, the New York State uh, government tenant for, for uh, public servants and employees. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things that I found was that out of the box, it's fairly easy to stand up a page, put content in, structure things out, drag things around. Um, so here we have an example. This would be the landing page for the beginning of this course. We can do things like set up uh, some text within the page to provide information, uh, pertinent information, things like having video in here as well. Um, and then one of the cool things that I found is as part of this is we can sort of interconnect and uh, give our learners different ways of getting to the content that they need. So for example, um, something like our, our course calendar. 
it exists as its own separate entity on the site, but we can call that information into a page via a web part and display that in any number of ways. We can create a view for that data and show specific fields. So for example, here in this page, we have our course calendar, which anytime this occurs, a user could click on that title, um, immediately go back over to the calendar itself, um, or even drill further down in and see specific list items for more information, whatever that might be. And we, can, we could expand further upon this, provide links to something like uh, the document library where we're having them drop this information. Um, in addition to, they can use navigation as well to, to go back and forth and access this in any number of different ways. And we could even pull uh, this information out and display it in any other page in any other number of ways that the, the platform would allow us. And then, <clears throat> so some of that functionality that I mentioned that I added in with uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript um, is just this collapsible navigation, which you would think would be there by default in the platform, but wasn't. So um, I simply just included a, a little bit of that to reference some, some JavaScript files to get this functionality uh, within the platform. Um, <clears throat> So enabling users to sort of communicate with one another, also find a way for them to uh, have a place to sort of encourage things like reflection, um, uh, giving them a way socially to interact with one another and learn. We can do that through things like our discussion boards, which is sort of a staple of most learning platforms. And we can see here that we can set up different categories or different sections based on the needs of the class. So here I've just thrown in three different ones, one for introductions, one for things like the lists exercises, um, one for the user roles and permissions. And we can see here that this gives users a uh, couple of different ways to interact, both with each other and with their instructors. So within the platform, just as an example, um, users could come in and with a simple tick of a box, label their posting as a question. So this would give them a way to reach out to the instructor for a specific answer or to denote uh, that they have a very specific question of some kind that requires attention. So this was a posting that was marked as a question and I'll just edit it quick to show you that um, from the user's end what that might look like. You can see here there's a simple box uh, to denote that it's a question. And they get all of the typical um, uh, WYSIWYG interactions to adjust type, uh, things like insert uh, a photo, screenshot, a video, a link, upload a file, um, even go so far as to if they need to embed things like HTML snippets. Most of the stuff that you see in uh, Blackboard's discussion board system as well in addition to choosing which category that this best filters into for that posting. Um, and then just to show what that looks like in, in practice. So when a user gets a, you know, any number of responses, anyone who's listed as either the site owner, um, instructor, or a site moderator can come in and mark a best answer. So that way it automatically promotes it to the top of this list and users who might have a similar question can get to that information quickly. So this really affords a, a nice way to um, sort of enable our students to have that sociocultural learning element to this in addition to helping uh, encourage things like reflection um, and having those typical interactions that you would see from a uh, from a learning platform. And then just to show as well, um, one of the things that I, I ran into with a little bit of disparity in the platform is you have multiple different, multiple page types, multiple layouts that you can choose from and implement into this. Um, so really it would, 
it would depend upon what the instructor's goal would be for how the site looks. So this is a completely different layout type that's available within the platform. You can see I've got a couple qualms with it design-wise and that it feels a little too big on screen. Um, takes up a lot of space in different areas and I wish it, it afforded the ability to compact that down. But we can see here, just like with our, our homepage, it gives you the ability to put certain information into the site, list that out and provide our users with a means of getting to the different elements that they would, uh, they would need right there. Oops. And then, uh, my page looks like it, it broke here. Go to this one. Um, one of the other interesting things that I found with this as well is the ability to um, use the platform itself as uh, a means of instructing as well. So really enabling that cohesive experience for the learner where if they're trying to learn this platform, um, simply in just navigating around through the class itself, um, they'll get a handle on how SharePoint works from a beginner's uh, perspective. You can see here there's uh, a YouTube video embedded in here, so we can call in elements from outside of the Office 365 platform as well. You also see some of the little issues that I've, I've got with this as well in terms of page layouts doesn't use space effectively and it's kind of difficult to um, arrange things in a, a, a visually appealing manner. Um, this page needs some work still, but this page is intended to be an introduction to working with lists in SharePoint, um, having something like a video within the page so users can both read and view and watch uh, what the uh, learning experience is supposed to be, the information that they're required to have, and then also directly in the page being able to come in and interact with um, some materials to get that hands-on experience with it. Um, so users would be able to come in, interact with, edit, delete, view an item, which is what this section would be asking them to do, and sort of explore it, work with it, um, and have all of those concise elements in one location for them but also with you know, previous experience, knowing that they can go directly to this list item itself and interact with it in different ways here as well. And then the other added benefit uh, that I found for the platform, just as a, a default in here, is uh, document libraries, the ability for students to hand in any sort of uh, papers or writing samples or mockups whatever it might be that they would need as part of the course requirements. They're able to come in and upload. Um, you can even use permissions to establish ownership, so that way um, if there are specific documents that specific students need access to for edits, whether it's uh, the ability to add comments or to hand back in assignments, um, an instructor could use that permissioning level to make sure that just the student receives uh, that information or a specific group of, of students. So, you could even establish uh, specific groups of students and give them access to a, a work group area, a place to work, uh, host documents, collaborate. Um, they'd be able to collaborate live in here. Everyone could be logged in at the same time using Skype for Business, communicate with one another, um, and work uh, within the same documents or in the same library space uh, synchronously at the same time. Um, so some of the affordances that I, I found the platform met using social constructivism and andragogy as sort of my, my criteria for evaluation of the, the platform. Um, it enabled authentic experiences in that students are working directly within the platform. Um, foundation orientation through those exercises, problem solving, they'd be able to bring their real world uh, business problems into the platform. 
uh, either on their own or through, uh, in, you know, the instructor encouraging that. Um, they could also build out those exercises with real world examples. We could use real world data, something through like maybe open data and why, um, and really utilize that platform as a business solution to help give them that authentic experience of using it in a real world environment, even while they're learning. Um, Ken, just a heads up that it's 620. Yep. We've got someone else at 630. Okay. Okay. I'll wrap up quick. Um, <clears throat> readiness in terms of the accessible nature of the platform, everyone that would be using this has easy access to it. The site could be opened to um, a specific group or the, the state employee uh, tenant as a whole. Um, Self-concept is enabled by putting the learner in charge of this. So once the learner has access, they sort of have the freedom to go through this and progress through this um, in any manner that they, they might wish to, even though there's a hierarchy in place. Um, a learner could easily skip to something like working with the library section or the, the list section, however this might be structured out. Um, and most of the basic, basic functionality that is in the platform, um, I also found in other platforms which are dedicated specifically to uh, online learning. Some of the deficiencies that I found, there's no built-in way of record keeping or grading students. Um, it's not accessible to what we call external users, so people outside of New York State government employ. Um, that's specifically in the, the environment I was working with and the, the goal I had for this. Um, there's problems formatting content, as you saw. Doesn't seem to be a happy medium in there. Um, out of the box, it's, it's a little bit of a nightmare for me as a, a visual designer. Um, this also wouldn't be a good solution for things like soft skill trainings, uh, things like respectful communication, um, other, other trainings like that. Uh, lends itself more towards the technical side. Uh, things for future consideration, um, development of a record keeping system. It's doable. I've seen similar things, um, but this was just outside of the scope of my studies here. Um, reporting tools, um, things for like tracking and showing uh, compliance uh, statewide. Um, also maybe developing some custom page types or layouts to help structure that content a little more. Okay. Questions and feedback. Um, Ken, do you know if this is being used anywhere for classroom? experiences um in my research i found several companies that offer things like add-ons and adaptations to the platform that will gear it towards that but i i was not able to find a specific instance where this was uh being used as a, an educational platform okay <clears throat> i thought this was good it, it is really an honest look at it and um it seems like, for instance, it, it, with no real internal grading structure, it would be, it might just be limited to sort of training situations where there's really not a grading. Yeah. Needed. It's more just for, you know, training people in some specific, yep. or, or especially. Yeah. And that's where something like, e even though that's not uh, built in there, it's not something that's readily available. It would need some development work to put in. Um, for the sake of training, where you're simply, you know, sort of people coming in, getting information, um, getting the knowledge that they need, I think this would work really well as something like an open source learning environment where students can come in and, and progress through however they might choose to do so. Oh, I see. So at, at their own speed, just be there. You could host. Yeah. And leave it there whenever and update it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I could see that. And, and, you know, I was going to suggest um, that you um, include a conclusion in your thesis. I, I think you got to some of this um, yep. in, in the other part, but I, I'd like to see, you know, how does it support andragogy in particular, because that's really where grading, yep. I often find, is less of an issue and the motivation, you know, like learning a new skill is, mm -hmm. is a higher thing. Um, and, you know, yep. certain strengths and weaknesses, you listed deficiencies, which is, is fine. It was sort of where I was going, so you, you're ahead of me. Yep. And, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, also you may um, 
mention some of the limitations of your study. For instance, I don't think you discuss accessibility at all. <clears throat> and that's fine. Just be honest about it. Um, so, you know, yep. someone is colorblind okay. or whatever, uh, you know, it, it's just an area you're not, you know, you know, that's a whole thesis in itself. Um, or, or yeah, it, it is. I actually had to, to do some of that for the platform and part of um, the, the legal requirements for making sure that Office 365 and SharePoint within New York State government tenant actually met the accessibility needs. Um, okay. And you're right, that's like a completely different uh, yeah. study in and of itself. <clears throat> but you really want to mention it as, as a limitation to your study okay. so you're honest about it because otherwise people would get upset. You know, you're not covering something that's very important. Yes. So as long as you say yep. up front, yeah. I think you're fine. Um, and the other thing, okay. is, um, you know, and we've talked about this, if, and you mentioned it, is it better for certain types of classes? You know, is it more for technical or maybe mm -hmm. not? You, you couldn't say. Um, I would say um, you may want to, you should have a little bit of a section on the need for further study. Um, some of the things yes. for instance, yep. you can do, you know, with the surveys and interviews and even testing yeah. it in the classroom settings, see if it works, you know, uh, yep. run some sort of pilot. Um, and, and so you don't have to do any of those, but I, I definitely yeah. have that in a section, just things that would, you know, for further study kind of thing. So that's, that's, uh, those okay. are my comments and I'll, I'll post this to the chat room too. So you can see some of it chat session okay anyone else have questions i know we're I just, it's one little question can i was wondering about using this as like sort of like a meta learning platform if your goal was really to be teaching sharepoint mm -hmm. you know it seems like it would be a really good tool for that or maybe an ancillary benefit of anybody who comes through this is going to have familiarity with sharepoint and that's actually a useful skills yeah. as opposed to familiarity with blackboard yep yeah, and we, we actually have used this to a, a certain degree before this. Um, I developed a, a, an in-person training that basically guides new users through SharePoint, so it shows them some of the basics. Um, a lot of the stuff that I was trying to help evaluate this for, um, for my, my thesis here. So we are in process of getting something like that stood up, and this this was sort of part of that on, on my end to show that the platform could be used as a sort of this like meta learning where you're using it to learn about it. Right. So say like if, if an institution is a SharePoint institution and it's required to do mm -hmm. some Title IX training that it's going to do online. Yep. Or safety training. Yep. You do it in SharePoint and you get this additional benefit of people say, oh, I can do that in SharePoint. You know, and I think that's... Yeah. That's, I think that's a big thing, actually, because and they've already invested in it. Plus, if you do it that way, the yep. institution gets expertise in using SharePoint. Yes. Yep. You know, yeah, and that's sort of what we're we're kind of seeing too. Is like a lot of stuff is moving over to SharePoint. So the, I think over time, that's that's the scenario that we're going to run into where maybe necessarily a specific training about SharePoint probably isn't going to be needed, just because everyone's going to be in there anyways for a lot of other things whether it's business related or meeting things like title IX compliance and and so on thank you okay uh yeah i think that that about covers it then yeah i mean i i think uh, it's really kind of nice to see it in use at the level you're doing at least it, i agree with steve in that sense that mm -hmm. i'm seeing things that I didn't realize were there. I mean, I don't use it yet. We're going to be going to use yeah. it later, but it's, it's sort of nice because it's a little scary when you're presented with something new, but when you get to see it in you, it, yeah. it's, it's nice. Yeah. And it is, there's, there's a little bit of a learning curve to get into it. Um, I've only been using it since December of 2016. I came in, I was basically hired as a student assistant to be a developer. Um, so my, my experience in web design and graphics design were sort of what they hired me for. And it, it did take like, it took like two, three months to really get the hang of it on um, just the graphical user interface portion of it. Um, 
but once you get into it, 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 like you said, it ceases to become that scary monster and you can really find a lot of different uses for it and uh, a lot of different qualities that it has that sort of makes it pretty, pretty flexible as a platform. Well, it's almost an example of constructivist learning in that you just watch it being used. Yeah. You don't say, oh, here's the first thing you should learn. Yep. You know, you sort of go right at yep. it. I did have a question. I think we've got a few seconds. Um, you mentioned using Photoshop and Illustrator, I think, and Illustrator, and, uh, you know, you create mm -hmm. some video. Is, is that going to create limitations in terms of what students are going to need ac access to? Is that just sort of an upfront for the the teacher no that's just sort of an upfront me being yeah that's just me as an instructor being and also being open with the um the elements and the tools that i use to sort of construct some of my mock-ups and some of the things uh for my my thesis but yeah none of those would be really required um uh you know an instructor could go to you know any sort of creative commons open source for images they might need um, generate the stuff themselves, um, even within SharePoint, things like OneNote, Word. Uh, there's a lot of different options for an alternative to things like Photoshop. Got you. So the shell is there and things like discussions would be there and it's just how yep. people want to go, depending on the course. I mean, if you're teaching Photoshop, yeah. fine, that's what that's you teach anyway. Yep. Yeah. And there's, there's all kinds of other things that you can drop into, things like a news feed that kind of acts like uh, a social media feed, you can use the at symbol to mention, you can use hashtags. Um, I think I mentioned some of that in my my thesis in the paper portion as well. There's okay. a lot of different things that could be plugged in. Good. Okay, well, I want to move on. I see Sean is here. So you can un uh, share your screen. Uh,